good evening good afternoon good morning wherever you're watching from it's still another series of uh, read my book with me the first week i read the first chapter which says you are god's battlers the second week we read you are okay the first week you're the temple of the living god the second week you're god's battlers and today we are going to be reading chapter 3, which is, You Are God's Masterpiece. Sometimes, it's difficult to understand our identity as God's masterpiece through the confusion of sin, fear, or doubt. We wonder if His promises might be too good to be true. In Ephesians, Paul describes God as a God who loves us too much to let us stray as we are. This chapter will challenge you to accept your identity as a member of God's family and allow him to mold you into the masterpiece he designed we are to accept god's refining work in us as paul did we will receive the power and the faith to complete god's kingdom work in ephesians chapter 2 verse 10 it says we are god's masterpiece that means you are not average you are not ordinary you are one of a kind when god created you he went to great lengths to make you exactly the way he wanted you didn't just happen to get your personality you didn't just accidentally get your nose your skin color your gifts or abilities God designed you the way you are on purpose for a purpose. The Apostle Paul says we should be to the praise of God's glory. In this passage, he is not talking about giving God praise with our words, although that is important. He is encouraging us to make our lives a living praise to God. When you understand your value and not only who you are, but whose you are, then your existence will give God praise. When you are secure in who God made you and you go all out each day being your best, your life will give God praise. In other words, doing and driving to work, you are giving God praise. Mowing the lawn, you are giving God praise. Going to buy groceries in the shop, you are giving God praise. Walking to the mall, you are giving God praise. Honor God today by accepting who you are. Make the decision to be the best you can be. Get up every morning and set your mind in the right direction by making positive affirmation over your life. I am the apple of God's eyes. I am his masterpiece. His fingerprints are all over my life. If you will learn to accept and approve yourself and have a right opinion about who you are, then you are going to ignore anything that is contrary god is going to pour out his blessings and you will live that life of victory that god has in store for you the basic reality of god is plain enough open your eyes and there it is by taking a long and thoughtful look at what god has created people have always been able to see what their eyes as such can't see eternal power for instance 
the mysteries of his divine being. The heaven tells of the glory of God, the skies display his marvelous craftsmanship that you will see in Psalm 19 verse 1. God plays a great power in the beauty of our world. He chose to give us the beauty as a blessing and as a reminder. We ignore this beauty if we do not accept it. And that will be to our loss. We are God's masterpiece. While most folks are familiar with the great passage on grace in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1 to 9, which invariably ends up in a short conclusion about the thought in Paul's mind. For we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ so that we can do the good things he planned for us long ago. God didn't just save us from sin and death, but he saved us for an eternal life of beauty and purpose. The same God who, who paints a different sunset each evening and who splashed touches of his glory throughout creation that he has made in the artist who has created you is the artist who has created you for a special purpose he put you together with that purpose in mind when you were still in your mother's womb psalm 139 verse 13 to 16 and he created you were born of the spirit of christ and remained to share in his glory to help you on your journey god has given you certain gifts to use for his people to bring him glory and to help you find joy in your service in other words in any worst moment we wonder about our purpose, our value, our significance. In those moments, let's look at the beautiful universe God has created and push back the voice of Satan, who is trying to make us feel valueless and fear or not to hear the voice of God. You are my masterpiece created to bring blessings. Don't ever let go of that promise. You are not to ever know exactly how this promise is true until you sit in glory with him. I've met others who were touched by the beauty God revealed in you. People who never knew, you never knew, were touched by you. Remember, many of the great works of art were not appreciated in the day they were crafted. But over time, this just significant beauty and power have blessed thousands. You are God's masterpiece. Don't believe anything less about yourself. Your value is set by the creator, by God. Heaven declares the glory of God simply by their way of existence. Do you what he made them to do? So do you. God built you in his heart, of, uh, built in, in the heart of every person, the passion to make a mark on history. There is the inner drive in all of us to make our lives count, to make a difference and to feel significant. When we aren't doing this, we feel empty and unfulfilled. We have internal mechanism that compels us unfortunately many today don't understand the impact they really do make they don't consider where to direct their energy and spend most of their lives chasing their tails their world with meaningless activity that bring no real personal fulfillment or eternal value they end up living empty and meaningless lives. God's word 
gives us two incredible truths that is applied to our lives will assist us in making our lives count. In Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10, it says, For we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus so that we do things, good things he planned for us long ago. You are God's masterpiece. There is no one like you. You are his prized possession. You are custom made and priceless. There is no one like you and never will be. You are special in his eyes. This is the greatest revelation you can possess. You were created to do God's work. God has a plan for your life. You have a purpose. There are things God wants to do in you and through you. Don't waste another day. Make your life count. Get involved in the lives of those around you. After all, you are God's masterpiece. God didn't get, didn't just save you or save us from sin and death, but he saved us for an eternal life of beauty and purpose. The same God who paints a different sunset each evening and splash touch of glory throughout creation has made in you something beautiful. It is our worst, in our worst moments, we wonder about our purpose, our value, and our significance. In those moments, let's look at beautiful universe God has created. Then push back the voice of Satan, which is trying to make us feel useless or think we are not anything. You are God's masterpiece, created to bring blessings. Don't ever let go of that promise. You may not even know exactly how this promise will work, but it's going to work for you. God's significant work. In Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10, it says, For we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus, so that we can do the good things he planned for us long ago. The author, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2 says, Let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. Some turn in the story are on some turns in the story are unexpected and unpleasant. Trust him and keep your eyes on him. He knows what he is doing. The porter. In Isaiah chapter 64 verse 8, it says, Yet, O Lord, you are our father. We are the clay. You are the porter. We are all the work of your hands. In Jeremiah chapter 18 verse 3 to 6, it says, So I went down to the porter's house, and I saw him walking at the wheels, but the pot he was shaping from the clay was made in his hand. So the potter formed it from another pot, shaping it as it seems best to him. Then the word of the Lord came to me. O Israel, O house of Israel, can I not do with you as this potter does, declares the Lord. Sometimes the potter Work is uncomfortable for the pot. Trust God and keep your eyes on him. He knows what he is doing. God is our architect. In 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 5, it says, You also, like living stones, are built, are being built into a spiritual house. The architect is engineering your life with perfect precision. He is the dweller. In Zechariah chapter 13 verse 9, he says, I will refine them like silver and test them like gold. In Daniel chapter 11 verse 35, he says, The desire to refine, forge, 
and make us pure. The refining, purging, and purifying process is not always fun. Example of refining precious metals. Trust God and keep your eyes on Him. He knows what He is doing. The altering, the sculpturing, the engineering, the refining process hurts, but that is how the masterpiece is crafted. In James chapter 1, verse 2 to 4, it says, Consider it pure joy, my brothers, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because knowing that the testing of your faith develops perseverance. Perseverance must finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. All that often we, des we desire the end product being the ma that being a masterpiece but usually we are unwilling to go through what it takes to be that how do we respond to adversity c.s lewis says he puts it this way surely what a man does when he is taken off his guard is the best evidence for what sort of man he is. Let all let God use everything that is going to, you're going through in your life to make you who He wants you to be. In Hebrews chapter twelve, from verse seven to eleven, say endure hardship as discipline. God is creating you as sons. He's treating you as sons. For what son is not disciplined by his father? If you are not disciplined and everyone undergoes discipline, then you are illegitimate children and not true sons. Moreover, we all have human fathers who discipline us and we respect them for it. How much more? Should we submit to the Father of our spirits and live? Our Father disciplines us for a little while, as He thought best. But God disciplines us for our good, that we may share in His holiness. No discipline seems pleasant at that time, but painful. But later on, however, it produces a harvest of righteousness and peace for those who have been trained by it. You are his masterpiece. He has put his signature on you. In 2 Corinthians chapter 1, from verse 21 to verse 22, it says, Now it is God who makes both us and you stand firm in Christ. He anointed us, set his seal of ownership on us, and put his spirit in our hearts as a deposit guaranteeing that it is to come. In Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3 verse 13 and Ephesians chapter 4 verse 30 reiterates that. In, in Galatians chapter 2 chapter 5 from 22 to 23 say, but the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, Peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. In John chapter 13 verse 35, it says, By this all men will know that you are my disciples, if you love one another. As he develops you and puts his signature on you as his masterpiece, the whole world will know you are his submit to the master as he makes you his masterpiece in romans chapter 12 verse 1 to 2 he say therefore i urge you brothers in view of god's mercy to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice holy and pleasing to god this is spiritual act of worship do not conform anymore to the pattern of this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind 
then you'll be able to test and prove what God's will is, his good and pleasing and perfect will. Too often, instead of submitting to God, we fight what he is doing in us. And Remora puts it this way, many Christians fear and flee, seek deliverance from all that will humble them. At times, they may pray for humility, but in their heart of heart, they pray even more to be kept from things that will bring them to that place. In Isaiah 45 verse 9, it says, does a clean pot ever argue with his maker? Does a clay dispute what the one who shapes it is saying? Stop, you are doing it wrong. Does the pot exclaim, how clumsy can you be? In Romans chapter 9, from 20 to 21, it says, But you are, O oh man. Who are you to talk back to God? Shall what is formed say to him who formed it? Why did you make me like this? Does not the potter have the right to make out of sin, lump of clay, some poetry for noble purpose and some for common purpose? The masterpiece is only a masterpiece when the master craft eats as he desires. In 1 Corinthians chapter 1 from verse 26 to 28, think of what you were when you were called. Not many of you were wise by human standard. Not many of you were influential. Not many of you were noble birds. But God chose the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. God chose the weak things of the world to shame the strong. He chose the lowly things of the world and that he to despise things and the things that are not to nullify things that are. Don't you ever think that you have to be something more than his masterpiece. He knows the masterpiece looks like. Trust him. Trust him that he made you. Trust God that made you. Who wants you to be what right for you? In Psalm 139 from 13 to 14, it says, For you are created, for you created my innermost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I will praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. Trust he will continue developing you. He wants to develop you. Nothing is beyond his control. Romans 8 28 says, And we know that all things work together for good for those who love God and those who are called according to his purpose. Whatever mistake you have made, Whatever bad thing you have that have happened to you, he will turn all that around to make you his masterpiece. You are God's masterpiece. Your weaknesses, inabilities, failures, present challenge is not a challenge to God. God's plan for you, for your life, and your willingness to be what he wants you to be. Let him make you his masterpiece with his signature on your life. In 2 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 17, it says, Therefore, if any man is in Christ, is a new creation, the old has gone, the new has come. Hallelujah. Application to this. Don't fight him. Hebrews 12, 2 says, Keep your eyes open. On him growing closer to him James chapter 1 verse 2 trust him in every situation let him develop you as he desires in 2nd Peter chapter 3 verse 9 it says 
He's patient with you. So be patient with yourself too. It's important that we all get to know that we are God's masterpiece. God's masterpiece. Keep your eyes on him. Keep growing closer to him. Trust him in every situation. Let him develop you as he desires. You are God's masterpiece. Thank you so much for reading the book with me. And I know you have been blessed. We'll meet again next week as we continue to read the next chapter of the book. You are. God bless you. And thank you for listening to the reading of my book, You Are Chapter 3. Bye and be blessed. Be a master.